Guys, I think I just came across the most distressed building I have seen in a long time. I was going through some condo listings for sale from one of my clients where I came across this address that I have not quite seen before. And the listing seemed too good to be true. At first, I thought it was a offer night auction style pricing method where it was priced way below market value. But then I dug a bit deeper and I saw no, contrary to my initial reaction, it was not for offer night, it was just a massively discounted listing price because it was a distressed sale in a distressed market in a distressed building. So we're gonna cover this building, this unit, and much more for context. Before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Sam, a Toronto real estate agent, working actively across the Toronto and GTA real estate market. On this channel, we like to do these types of videos, market updates, market stats, buyer advice, seller advice, condo tours, area analysis, building reviews, so much more. So if you find any of this content enjoyable, please subscribe. Or if you have any buying or selling inquiries in today's market, you should probably be having the buying inquiries, not so much the selling inquiries. Feel free to get in touch with me. My contact information in the description box is easier than ever to book a call with me. My link is in the description as well. Book a call, let's chat, I would be happy to assist. So let's start with the building. What is the building in question? So off the bat, the building in question is eight Haas Boutique condos. And when you pull it up, the address, the municipal address is 2433 Dufferin Street. For those who are not familiar with this portion of Dufferin or this part of the city, 2433 Dundas, uh, not Dundas, Dufferin, there we go, is close to the major intersection of Dufferin and Eglinton. Now, despite what a lot of people might think, Dufferin and Eglinton is a area on the come up, right? There is a lot of condos that have already come up on Eglinton, a little bit further east of this, not quite as west as Dufferin, but a little bit further east. And there are some really good residential homes here, like detached, semi-detached, site splits here along Winona, Atlas Avenue, Gloucester Grove, I mean, the Cedarville Park here is one of the best parks, in my opinion, and part of, you know, the long series of trails, continuous trails and ravines that connect all the way to waterfront. But the building question is still a little bit on the seedier side of the city, but ultimately it's still Toronto. Even the seediest parts of Toronto are very safe. I mean, maybe I'm quite flexible on this. You know, I've been living in the city for a long time. To me, stuff like homeless people or maybe, you know, seedier parts of the city don't really bother me personally. I'm okay with it, but others might have an issue. Nonetheless, it is back into a park and it's an area that has a lot of potential and on the come up, as I said previous. So what makes this building so distressed and, and what made it stand out to me? Well, first and foremost, you see it's a uh, low rise, seven stories, uh, 99 units, only 440 square feet to 1600 square feet. A lot of newer buildings don't all have units upwards of 1600 square feet. And the average per square foot is $810. Take a look at that, $810. Now there's a lot of buildings that have an average per square foot of $500, but those are 45 year old buildings in bad parts of the city. There's a lot of buildings that have an average per square foot of $800, but there are buildings with units that are in the multi-millions and start at 1500 square feet. For instance, there's some buildings in Bayview Village, for example, that have units upwards of 2000 square feet, sell for 1.5 million, but if you look at it purely at an average per square foot price basis, you would think it's a cheap building, but no, it's actually a very expensive building with massive units. This is not the case here because this was built in 2023. So a building that was built in 2023 already has the average per square foot price of $810 per square foot. And the unit that really exemplifies this and really drove home the point and was really the initial reason I discovered this building anyways, because as I mentioned, I was going through condo listings for sale, was this unit that's currently on market for $875,000 unit 803. Now take a look at this. It's a four plus one, two bath, one parking at 1,300 square feet, near 1,400 square feet, listed for $875,000. And at $875,000, at 1,384 square feet, that comes to a asking price of $632 per square foot. A unit that was built in 2023 within the city of Toronto is listing for sale at $630 per square foot. That is a ridiculously low price per square foot. Now, I know I'm speaking alien language to a lot of people who probably 
undoubtedly think that like a unit next to the CN Tower should be worth 200K max uh, and everything is overpriced and the market's gonna crash and the economy is gonna collapse, right? I'm not talking to those crazies. I'm neither talking to the other crazies on the other side that think that this is gonna be worth 1,500 per square foot in two years. I'm talking to the normal reasonable people and normal reasonable people understand that even in a down condo market that we have today where condos are having a very hard time selling, $632 per square foot is ridiculously low for a 2023 building. I have to keep emphasizing that. First and foremost, four plus ones are not common at all. Even in old buildings, you're not gonna find an old like four plus one, right? Uh, you're gonna find three bedrooms that are maybe like 4,000 square feet or three bedrooms that are maybe 2,500 square feet, but a four plus one is not common. Furthermore, four plus one is 1,300 square feet. I don't know to say if that's impressive or that's actually disappointing. It's, it's kind of in the middle here because they don't build 1,300 square feet units anymore either for newer buildings, let alone 1,300 square feet units that are for four bedrooms and once we start to take a look at the pictures here we start to see that it's a buy level as well as a two-story i mean from the pictures it looks somewhat cookie cutter it looks a little bit better than other buildings in terms of the layout at least on the first floor right uh, you have some windows this is clearly one of the bedrooms if not the plus one but i wouldn't be surprised if it's the bedroom and it, it's really hard to make sense of the geography of the unit purely based on the pictures, right? The pictures don't really give you a coherent, uh, you know, understanding of how the layout really, you know, progresses. Uh, once again, uh, undoubtedly, those sliding doors are some of the bedrooms here. And, you know, it's just a bit of a awkward layout. It looks to be two story in full. And this is another bedroom here with another sliding door. You have seen tower views, you have a big terrace, all that jazz. And then, yeah, you have the floor plans here towards the end that give you a better understanding of what the layout is like. It's it's laid out like a condo townhouse, but it's a condominium unit slash apartment. And the maintenance is not ridiculous whatsoever. It's $900, right? Per square foot, that's pretty decent. If we just simply see what has sold, for example, right? Let's just take a look at the sales, right? You have this uh, three bedroom unit that sold for 640K. It's a 900 square feet unit that sold for 640K, like 953. That comes to a price per square foot of $672. And when we go through the history, you see part of the reason that this is a distressed building, and this is common amongst a lot of buildings, right? Like 90% of the buildings will see the same history. Terminated, 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 expired, terminated, 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 expired, terminated, expired, terminated, right? You can keep going on and on. So frankly, this is not a good reflection of the building's quality. I haven't been to the building. I've never shown the building. For all I know, I might go and I'll be pleasantly surprised with the quality of the building. Before visiting the actual building, ever showing it, if I had to take a leap and guess what this indicates, it probably indicates that the building is not a decent building whatsoever, right? It probably indicates that's probably at best a mediocre building to an awful building. Uh, units don't really sell at $600 per square foot. Even some of the buildings I've known to list on this channel as Toronto condo buildings that buyers should avoid or bad Toronto condo buildings uh, or Toronto condo buildings that I would only recommend in rare exceptions. Whatever building reviews you've seen from me, even those buildings, like the worst of the worst typically do end up selling more than $600 per square foot. Now to be fair this building does uh, kind of lean towards the larger sized units and the larger the size the lower the per square foot price. That's why I gave you examples of Bayview Village buildings that have at minimum the cheapest units in those buildings are 1.5 million and just looking at it at a price per square foot you would think oh it's a cheap building but no it's just huge units at expensive price points and that's why the price per square foot is artificial officially low without context. This is not the situation here. It might be a bit of the explanation, but no, it's not the whole explanation. I mean, we just simply just have to take a look at the reviews of the project, right? If we just examine the reviews of the project, it's a 3.1 star. If we just go from newest to oldest, I mean, there's this five star here, but it says buyer beware. Many people put money down to buy a unit here over five years ago, did not receive interest on the deposits. This is more of an issue with the builder uh, here, once again, uh, this seems to be more of an issue with the builder. This builder seems to have 
uh, taken deposits and canceled projects several times. Once again, Royal Park Builders only care for, about themselves, such and such and such. So these are all one-star reviews I see. And then, yeah, obviously you go back to before, they probably canceled some of the projects. Uh, and uh, you have more one-stars, but you have a couple of five-stars thrown in here, right? So just connecting all the dots here with regards to the reviews and the price per square foot and looking at some of the pictures and the area, I would probably have to say these, this is a bad reflection of the condo building. And the only value proposition I see for any potential buyer to take advantage of these low price per square foot points is if you want to go bargain bin shopping and just buy at the bottom and not even move in yourself and rent it out like it, although it is a ridiculously low price point and it seems a bit attractive on a price per square foot basis your situation has to be really like really right right there is a lot of risk involved